a lot of the people who are self-made, they don't wait for somebody to tell them or give them directions. Uh, leave it to me. If you want some bomb ass weed, leave it to me. If you want a fire ass verse, leave it to me. If you want a bad bitch, take and leave her with me. What's going on? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I like, that's a big ass. How big, how long is that? Broke my shit. A joint? Yeah. I call this, uh, this the King Kong finger right here. All right, we got the King Kong finger in the room. How are you, buddy? <laughs> what's up, man? How are you, bro? I, I love what's behind your head. Is that new? Oh, yeah. No, we keep, uh, that's, that's one of the ones that you have sent us. You know, y'all be sending us uh, shipments like every every time I ask for one. So that's one of the new ones. Are you and in I, the house? Yeah. This, I haven't this, seen this set up. It's my studio. I love it. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's the studio. I just I just ripped out this one. Just open it up. Smoke some pot. Take hey, a shot. That's the wave right there. So, Wiz, I do this. I think you know I do this series. I started a few years ago called Self Made. And uh, I'm fortunate because of these brands like McQueen and the Violet Fog, which is your baby right here. Yeah, yep. Um, because of Bamboo, because of Bel Air, uh, because of all my past brands, I get to talk to awesome, successful uh, artists and music, uh, actors, actresses, sports, celebrities, business people, comedians. Um, and the thing that, that I always found frustrating you know, uh, starting my business and growing my business is uh, I hated hearing about success. And I loved hearing about, gosh, it was hard. It wasn't easy. I loved it. I loved knowing that it, how hard it was because if it was easy, like why the fuck haven't I gotten there yet? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I start off the same way with everybody. Um, what does self-made mean for you? Um, self-made is, it's all about like, you having just like a, a certain different type of, uh, hustle and just like direction and just like, kind of like a knowledge of self. Um, a lot of people, they hear self-made and then they think that somebody is like saying that they did it all on their own. And to me, it, it doesn't mean that you actually done it yourself, but it just means that you're self-motivated. Nobody really has to, um, you know, remind you to do the important things that is going to put you, your company or whatever it is, your dream or your purpose um, forward, whether it's your education or making money. Um, a lot of the people who are self-made, they they don't uh, wait for somebody to, you know, tell them or give them directions. They kind of, you know, give themselves in directions and eventually end up uh, being in, in position to give other people direction and change their lives as well. So where where do you think your, I want to use your words, where does your motivation come from? My motivation come from, I would say, I, I always just been inspired as a kid. Like my dad um, instilled in me really young just the importance of um, self-education and going above and beyond. And um, even in school, I was just always one of the kids who was really good at, you know, doing, um, excelling academically. But I also I had other talents that would that would just go beyond school. My dad, he really instilled it into in me to express those and to uh, to to try to figure out what I'm really good at and what I have a passion for. And that's just like a lifelong journey for me. Um, what, establishing myself financially, musically, spending time with my family, my son. Um, these are all like passions of mine and things that motivate me to stay creative and to, you know, uh, build, on the, build on those things. Do, do you think, and I, I'm always trying to, I think I overanalyze, but I think I can see, uh, I, I look at my parents as an example of, my dad is a workaholic and my mom is either, I always joke, she's fearless and clueless. And to me, those are two of the greatest qualities. Mm -hmm. And I think I have all three of those things. Like, do you see it as your parents like instilled in you who you are right now? You know, yeah, what? 100%. Um, you, you definitely, like my parents, 
um, they split up when I was like two years old. So I got to see, you know, one household and another household. So I got to take what I wanted from this and what I wanted from there. My mom gave me a lot more freedom um, as far as, you know, just being out and discovering. And I had a lot of family, like uncles and cousins, and things like that, who took care of me when I was with my mom. So it was more like learn as you go. And my dad was more, you know, my the solid, you know what I mean, structure. So I definitely got to pick and choose <laughs> who I wanted to listen to and when. But you, but you, but you saw both sides, and that I think that's what's the important part, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what I'll, I'll give you for me as an example, I wanted to be an archaeologist when I was a little kid. I had an aunt who restored uh, artifacts. She worked in in museums, and I just freaking loved that. What did you want when you were little? Um, I always wanted to be an entertainer. My uh, my dad owned businesses. So I never really seen him work for anybody. So I think that subconsciously, you know, made me want to be my own boss and and kind of just do things how I wanted to do them. But also my love for music and performing. Um, I just remember some of the best nights of my life being when, when my dad would just turn on the music. There would be no TV. He would just put on his records whether it be, you know, Bob Marley or Cool in the Gang or Sting in the Police or whatever it is, uh, we would we would really, really enjoy music. And I always remember from a young age just wanting to write and perform music. Like, even since I was my son's age, I've been, I've been writing raps, and he's even starting to write his own raps. So <clears throat> I think it's just in us. Did, did Was there anybody who stood out for you that, that you wanted to emulate in music? Yeah, I want to be like Puff Daddy. I want to be like Busta Rhymes. I want to be like The Brat, Mike Missy, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Those were all my favorite artists when I was a kid. Like a lot of them more animated and, you know, melodic and the fast rap and all that shit. I was going to say, what do they all have in common? And that's what they have in common. They're more. Uh... They're all. Flaming. Correct. They all have personalities, huge personality. They're almost, it's interesting. Their personalities are bigger than their music. I don't, I don't think because they all still got hits. Like, you know, yeah, what I yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like in that category, they never went beyond what their personality really was. And sometimes that'll stand out, that'll cause moments. And then, you know, sometimes people will forget about you, but real fans, they always remember. So um, when do you think music kicked in for you? Like when was, when did it real, when did you realize, you know what, this is what I want to pursue. This is what I want to do. Um, I think it, it became like, I, I became obsessed with music probably when I was about 14 years old, like 13, 14. That's when I started really working in the studio and making beats and recording my own albums. And you know what I mean? So that that's when I really, uh, got obsessed with it to the point where I was doing it every day instead of playing with my friends and shit. And then um, probably by the time I was about 16, 17, when I started battling and traveling to New York and things like that, that's when I see myself doing it more as a career and trying to learn the business side of it. Do you remember the first time you were on stage? Um, first time I was on stage was probably a talent show. I was in my, I was like 13. But first time, like, performing my own shit, um, I had to be, like, 16, 17. I, I used to do a lot of fashion shows and shit like that. So uh, who put you up to that? You did or your parents did fashion shows? Well, at that time, I had just moved back to Pittsburgh to live with my mom. So I was <clears throat> I was still in high school. I was in 10th grade. And um, just from recording at the studio that I was at, um, I met like a little, like a network of, of uh, guys who had been putting in work in Pittsburgh. There was Chad, there was Huggy, there was Benji, there was E. Dan, um, Diesel. There was a couple cats, <clears throat> and uh, 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 and yeah. So just from rapping with them and being at the studio with them, I kind of met other people um, who did other things. Uh, Chad was my manager at the time, and. Um, him and Benji, they knew a lot of different people on other sides of Pittsburgh. So they would 
throw a fashion show or if they were doing a, a boutique or some, you know, anything <clears throat> that was like a gathering of people where they needed uh, a performance or something like that. I was always one of the first names brought up because I was cool. Did, did, did you like being seen did you like performing did you like an audience did yeah yeah i loved it um because the underground scene at that time in pittsburgh um was like shadow lounge and there was like some bars in the strip district where people could perform at but it was always a big deal to just be on stage and that's that's what i wanted to do i wanted to be like the dudes that that i seen in pittsburgh who was rocking them crowds was there was there a a music scene in pittsburgh yeah, there was definitely a music scene. Um, we were kind of just emulating what we seen other places. So it was uh, there was there was a heavy like uh, I guess you could say like a backpack scene. That's why I would say like the more shadow lounge and yeah, soul kind of you know what I mean. Where it was like a it was like a band with a with, with rap type vibes. It's more lyrical, like on some Talib Kweli like common type shit. Yeah really big scene for that and a lot of a lot of that, those guys are still around now and they do a lot of things for the community and just helping out uh, you know the youth in Pittsburgh so it's definitely translated even though it wasn't you know the biggest money maker um the influence did a lot for fashion for um uh, for you know uh, uh uh just business in general in Pittsburgh a lot of those dudes paved the way is a Theme. Um, also, like the battling scene was really big too. That was around the time when dudes was doing a lot of DVDs, and people had like streetwear boutiques, and we would sell our mixtapes out of there. So we were just really trying to like battle and, and emulate what we seen going on in New York. So, like so back when <clears throat> when you were recording and making music, how would you get it out? Um, back then, you just had to press up CDs and and sell them individually um you you would have to know somebody who owned a store and um you try to drop off a certain amount of cds at the store and after the cds would sell you could come and pick up your money or if you was like me <clears throat> i would guarantee some sales so i would get my money up front <laughs> and then they would get their money back but i was like look I, i'm not leaving up out of here without the cheese so um, so hold on, hold on, hold on. What does what does guaranteed sales mean? Well, it's like if I give you the CDs and you give me the money, you basically bought the CDs off of me, so you yep. have to back. But I'm guaranteeing that people's going to come through and buy the CDs. Yeah. So, oh, and whether I'm at school, I'm handing out T-shirts, I'm going to other people's shows. I'm like, yo, go here, buy my CD, and eventually it just picked up, and I became, you know, um someone i guess that they could trust with a, with a decent product and it was like there was like a whole network of people um at the time in pittsburgh dropping music it was me uh chevy who was going by kev the hustler at the time there was gov there was some cats from the hill there was some cats from garfield beneficial so it was like any of us whenever we dropped people knew that it was going to be you know what i mean and even me at the time i was still working my way up so i wasn't even a high priority but I knew how to hustle. So, do, do you ever think back to those days and how people put music out today and think about the difference that it's taken place? The whole concept of you'd have to press the CD and go fucking sell it. Yeah, I mean, I think about it, but honestly, I just be trying to forget that shit because it don't apply to today at all. Correct. Best thing to do is just forget it and, and fucking move on. <laughs> but you, you don't see it as, it's almost like, I look at things like, shit, if I can do that, I can do anything. You know um, what I mean? I look at it like that, but then I look at, like, you know, grown grandparents who can't use iPhones, and I look at kids who can. And I'm like, you know, those grandparents, they they, they can't use them because, not because they're not capable, it's because they didn't let go <laughs> of, you know, their old way and adapt a new way. So it's like, I don't ever want to be like that when it comes to music where I'm so appreciative of an old way that I don't even fucking... No, I, I fucking love that because uh, um, a question I'd ask someone like you is, you know, to me, if you're successful before social media, you're, you're an icon because right. you, you're not going away. And what social media has done for a lot of artists is they're big fast, but they go away. Um, so in... Do you think that your ability to let go and try new things is your ability to stay? You know what I mean? 
Um, I think that has part of it, but a lot of it's not even really conscious because I'm just so curious. Um, I see people like doing new shit and I want to do it. You know what yeah. I mean? That's part of like my name Wiz comes from like technology. I was always the one in the in the hood with like a laptop or I was always the one who was doing, you know, the next level shit. So like naturally, you know what I'm saying? I think the only thing that, that messes with it for me is like business wise because I've seen, you know, the business go from actual physical CDs yep. so to numbers that don't exist. And it's really, really hard to like get into the algorithm if you're not like up there, up there in those buildings and, you know, with those people. So to me, that's, that's the thing that I look at as what I could change the most. Um, as far as, you know, for the next generation is how to, you know, be in control of your own streams and things like that. Yeah. Did, did, did you, what was your first, what do you think was the first break for you? Um, I feel like I had multiple breaks, but the first break, the first real break for me, I would say was uh, Say Yeah. Yeah. My first single when I, that I dropped when I was like 19. What happened? Like, from that point of drop, what does dropping mean back then? Uh, well, back then, it meant that you would put out a physical single. Um, you have an A side and a B side. So the A side would say, yeah, the B side was young and on his grind. And you would go on a radio promo tour, and you would basically just, like, live off of the label for a couple of weeks while they promote your record and try to get it to star status and then when you reach that star status, then it's like you build the album based off of that. You work with all the greatest producers and writers in the world, and then they take your project to the top. Were you signed then? Was I signed? Yeah, I was signed. You were signed then. Mm -hmm. D did it feel like you'd made it at that point? Do you feel like everything was easy? Or you nah. think everything's easy? No, nah, no, nah, I didn't feel like I made it at all. Why? Because uh, of the hotels I was staying in. <laughs> And uh, I would talk to to people on the side, like people who they didn't really want me to talk to, and they would let me know, like, yeah, you know, don't don't get caught up. Like they kind of do this for everybody, and and not even that, but you know, you're on the B squad right now. You're not even on the A squad, so you got to work your way up. Why do you think you listened? Like I could see most people being like, no, 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 you don't understand. I am. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I think I listen because I feel like uh, like my real path is just to, you know, soak up game and not really be a know-it-all. And if I got two sides telling me things, I'm going to take from both sides, you know what I'm saying, to figure yeah. out me. And um, I picked up a lot of game from the people that I was around when I, when I did sign my first deal. Um, who were trying to help me, and there was a lot of people who didn't know what the fuck they were doing, and I was still able to pick up game from them. So I think that's what really kept me, like you know, motivated and not 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 let me get frustrated. What, what what was the next step? What was the next break for you? What was the next thing that 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 moved you up? Um, after that, I feel like what moved me up was um, uh, just a combination of like the mixtape that I was dropping on Twitter. Twitter actually becoming popular and um, the tours that we had started doing where I would record the footage and put it on YouTube and just interaction with my fans between YouTube, Twitter, and the mixtapes. Was Cushion Orange, was that, uh, you put that out free, no? Yeah, that was put out free. Why? Um, at that time, it was more about just having a solid body of work um then who did it or what label you were signed to um were you was, signed at the time no nah, i wasn't signed at all i had left my deal at, at warner brothers uh the the original single deal i left that deal and i was independent at the time i was literally you know at home in my mom's basement and um yeah just making records going to the studio every night and just recording all of the footage and editing it and putting it together um, for myself. And that's when I seen the game shift. That's when I seen uh, music go all the way digital instead of uh, physical, like, CDs and things like that. And, um, you know, it was a lot 
more difficult to monetize back then. So people weren't really tripping on samples and they weren't really looking at us as the next superstars. So we were able to get away with a lot, um, you know, just on a creative level. Um, did people tell you, you got to get signed? You, can't, you Don't put this out free. You got to sign and put it on a label and get this shit out. Nah, um, at that time, nobody really believed in me. Um, I was just doing my tours kind of like to myself, uh, me and the homies, uh, shout out to Will, um, shout out to everybody who was like in our, our circle at that time. There were a couple people, um, Detroit, Maryland, Texas, New Orleans. There were a lot of places that we were able to travel and have a huge fan base that nobody really knew about. So, you know, as far as like signing a deal, I was kind of looked at as, um, as like the underground kid or just like the pothead who, you know what I mean, might or might not. Does it, does it the fact, like, I'm imagining back then, what's it like if, if, if it's, it's on you and there's a few people around you who are saying, you know what, you got it. Just let's keep going. Let's keep going. Was it tough? Was it difficult or was it, was there a point of I'm going to stop? Was there ever anything, you know, that it made you question what you're doing? Yeah. Um, nah, for me, it was, it was all like self-driven. Like I, I seen, I, I never seen no end goal. I still don't really see one. So I'm never really like satisfied. You know what I mean? If it's like we get a couple million views or if a show sells out, I'm loving it and I'm enjoying it. But that, that doesn't, you know, it doesn't make me feel like I'm done or like I need to quit. And, you know, not fully succeeding for me, um, it doesn't make me feel like I need to just pack it up and go home or anything like that. It always just gave me more of a reason to uh, try harder and just do different, different, more creative things to to make people um, not only notice me, but just notice the message of the music that that, that I'm putting out. So talk about what Taylor Gang means to you. People like Will and what you've put together. Yeah, Why? Taylor, real for real, is, it's a lifestyle, you know. Um, for me, it means everything because it's all about being yourself, um, identifying with you and your purpose in this world, and aligning yourself with people who have that same purpose. And that's where you get the whole gang from is we're all alike and we all want the same things and we're all willing to build and go through what it takes to get there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what it's been like and that's what my fans really gravitate take towards as well. Um, the music is one thing, but whatever it is, you just try to be your best and try to be the most talented and do the most research about it and give off the best energy and come up with the best ideas. And, you know, that's, that's what Taylor Gang is all about. Um has there been anybody that uh, who was famous at the time who is, has, you know what, Wiz, I'm, I'm going to help you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to do. Has there been anybody out there who's who's been behind you? Um, I feel like a lot of a lot of big dudes like lended their support early. Uh, Rick Ross was one of them. Uh, he invited me to his house to just stay and record a couple records when he seen what I was doing with the Taylor Gang. Uh, Puff Daddy's always been really, really nice to me as far as, you know, coming and checking me out on the road. And I remember when I was first, uh, you know, doing my merch, he put on the Taylor Gang sweatshirt and took a picture in it. And I was like, man, that was so, so big for me. I was like, wow, you just helped me and my brand out so much. And he didn't he didn't ask for nothing. He was just like, nigga, we on the same team, blah, blah, blah. So it was, it was always like love there. Snoop Dogg, of course, always been a huge, uh, you know, not even just friend, but like a mentor of mine. Uh, Too Short always showed me love, always uh, gave me game. Um, yeah, there's 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 a couple cats who I could say like always been in my corner and like really supported me like from the beginning, from the early stages of when I, you know, wearing hoodies in the club and shit. Do you set goals? Yeah, I set goals every year. How do you decide? How do you decide? How do you decide that? Mm, I just feel like all my goals are personal goals. So whatever I want to, you know, achieve personally and see myself do better, um, from the smallest goal to the biggest goal, I just write everything down and try to, you know, check back in 
uh, every couple months and see how I'm doing. Um, you, you've always, I was, I was checking out, say, yeah, I was looking at the video back then, which is crazy. Um, but you, you, you literally, to me at least, you're the same as you were now as you were back then. What do you, like, how do you tell people just to be yourself? How do you, how do you convince people that that's the way to handle yourself? That's the way to be. Cause to me, you've done that. Yeah. If if they were saying you were a pothead back then, nothing's changed. Everyone's right. just caught up to you, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the best thing that I could do is just kind of just stand on everything that I believe in. I think when people see see me being stop, solid, uh, just throughout every and any situation, they see me never fold. They 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 trust me, and they know and believe that what I say is authentic, and that you can do the same thing yourself. Um. You can read books and you can exercise and you can do the right thing and still be cool. You can uh, show up on time for meetings and still be in the studio all night. I want to show like the full spectrum of what it is to be successful in artist, to be an entertainer, to be uh, creative, to be a father, to be all of those things. And I think when people see uh, what's real, and they see that transparency, they look up to it and they, they, they want to live their own life like that. And um, it's easy for you to see it from me because I put it on the internet. It's been on the internet for the past 10, 12 years and it's still going. So, um, you know, in this day and age of bullshit, nonsense, you know, a lot of people don't really appreciate you till you're gone type shit. Um, you know, I just stay solid and keep the message clear the whole way through. And Where, <clears throat> who do you look up to for motivation today? Today? Yeah. Um, I would say, hold on, mommy, I'm doing a meeting right now. Mm -hmm. Can I do this real quick? Yeah. Don't have conversation. I just want to know what's going on. Um, I would say, like, uh, I look to my father for a lot of motivation. I look to uh, just like my favorites in anything that I do, whether it's like uh, that I enjoy, actually, whether it's like movies, <coughs> technology, sports. <coughs> um, some of the people that I train with, you know, we just have normal conversations, regular conversations. Definitely my favorite artists. Um, yeah, just just whoever, like everyday people. Um. What's next? What would you like to see happen with Wiz? Man, really, I just want to keep uh, putting out dope-ass music, um, keep directing videos. I want to shoot more movies for sure, my own and being in other people's movies. Um, I, and I'm definitely looking forward to uh, going back on tour. How have you handled COVID? What have you learned from COVID about yourself? I learned that I, I'm a little bit psychic, because I felt like some shit was going to happen. Uh, I learned um, that everybody should, you know, start looking at your business. And if you've never paid attention to your money before, this year should tell you, like, all right, cool, I'm going to look at all my money, what I say, what I got. And if you, you're not in the right space, do a little reset and get yourself right. If you are in the right space, keep doing the right thing and plan for the future. Um. Do you remember the first time you smoked weed? Man, I do remember the first time I smoked weed, but I don't really tell anybody because I don't try to influence them to, you know, try to be like Wiz Khalifa. No, 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 no. But, but you do remember the first time. Oh, yeah, yep. Uh, I think that's neat. Um, uh, I, I got I to gotta stick on one topic between you and I is uh, this brand, McQueen. Mm-hmm. When 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 you get hold of brands, whether it's it's your own or whether it's your your album or whether it's a brand like McQueen, what is it that makes you want to do something? What moves you? Um, the thing that moves me the most is how it affects my life directly. So if I'm into it, if it's something that I believe in, like every day, or if it's something that I see the world being a part of, um then it's definitely something that I'm able to move on and be comfortable with. 
do, do you see uh, if you could change anything in your past, would you? No. Not at all. Why? I feel like everything that I did before is what led me to where I'm at right now. Nothing. Nope. I, intervie I interviewed uh, Tyrese. I asked him the same question. You know what yeah. he said? What? Fuck yeah, I'd change everything. I'd Man. change everything. Jesus Christ. I, he said, I, if someone would have told me that I should do it this way and this way is better and this, I would have changed everything. And it, it kind of blew my mind, that idea that, you know what? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. But yeah, you wouldn't no. change a thing. I'm I'm good. I feel like uh yeah, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. I'm I'm straight. <laughs> um Wiz, it's it's awesome to talk to you. Um before we go, I got 10 quick little word association questions I ask everybody, okay? Just give okay. me one word, all right? Thanksgiving. Turkey. Steelers. Black and yellow. Taylor Gang. Pot. Pittsburgh. Khalifa. Snoop. Weed. Home. Pittsburgh. Weed. Wiz. <laughs> Wiz Khalifa. Dash. McQueen. Brett. Love it. <laughs> Wiz, I, I love you. You're my friend. Um uh you you've heard some of my story and i got to hear yours and i i always pick up certain things that i share with my team sorry i was going to say would i always share with my team uh something that i pick up from everyone i talk to because again i i need motivation and hearing you talk about how your ability to let go and the ability to always try new things and and expand your horizon. It's expanding your horizon. It's trying things. It's seeing what else is out there. Don't hold on to the past. I think that's so important to whether it's brand building or lifestyle or anything you do in the in business, because it allows you not to hold on and not to. You got to adapt. And it's it's like Phil Jackson said in uh, in um, uh, uh, the Last Dance. You know, adapt and adapt quickly. That's the key. Um, but I wish you all the success in the world. You've got a great team around you with Taylor Gang and Will and the team. And uh, uh, you're not going anywhere. Congrats. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. I'm glad to be family with you too, man. Thanks for letting me sit down with you, bro. And I love you too, fam. Thank you. Cheers, cheers. And a shot to you, my friend. The Queen team, you take a shot, I'm going to smoke some pot. <laughs> there you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm still Wiz. I'm still Wiz.